Okay, hello, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna to take you through one of my favorite chess puzzles of all time, uh, the thought process which I used to solve it and the extremely elegant solution. The reason that this is one of my favorite chess puzzles of all time is because it is, as I'm sure you've seen from the thumbnail and title of this video, just a mate in two. Checkmate in two moves. Now, that's really not very many moves. The only thing that can be simpler than that is checkmate in one move. You know, you might be coming into this thinking, this can't be that hard. Well, it took me about 10 minutes of just staring at this to solve it, which could be due to my lack of skill, uh, but hopefully due to the difficulty of the puzzle. However, uh, I will let you decide as we go through this. So the first thought that I had when looking at this puzzle is, okay, the black king is on g8. The king and this pawn here prevent the black king from being able to move anywhere, and so it's trapped which renders this rook almost entirely redundant. So we don't really need to consider this rook because the only way it could get active is through h6, rook h7, but that's two moves. And given that white goes first, uh, the title of this video would suggest that we should have delivered checkmate before this rook can move. The first thing I considered when looking at this puzzle is, okay, well, let's look at the pawn first. The pawn has one move, f7 check, forcing the king to g7. But then you see the problem. I mean, there are plenty of checkmates like let's promote, uh, king g6, queen f4, and after something like h4, we just deliver checkmate here. However, it's not a checkmate in two, so in the eyes of the puzzle, we have failed. In this position, we need to find mate in one, and the simple and very harsh reality is that there just simply is not one. Along this diagonal, the king will always have g6. Uh, g4 here, the way to infiltrate into the g file, is held by a pawn, and we can't deliver check uh, with the king, promoting to any piece allows the king g6. There's just no mate in one. So the move can't be f7. We can rule that out. The only other thing uh, that I was thinking in terms of pushing this pawn initially was, okay, how about I play something like queen d4, getting the queen on this diagonal, and so it's looking at g7. And then next move, after something like b6, I play f7, and that's checkmate in two moves, right? The only problem with this idea is that after I play queen d4, black can play a move. And that move can be h6, which is a very pesky move, very annoying move that we will see uh, generates a lot of problems for us later. So now if f7 is played, the king has h7, and although there definitely is going to be checkmate here, we can't deliver it in two moves. We've used our two moves and the king is not in check. So this pawn I then ruled out as uh, an option for moving because even when you're on this diagonal, you can't push it. After ruling out this pawn, my next thought was, okay, although I know it's probably going to be the queen that moves here, let's just rule out the king because it only has three moves. D6 is like nonsensical. I mean, you don't really open up anything. There's nothing that changes about the position um, that's significant after king D6. You actually just allow this king to move to multiple places. So we can rule out this move. Uh, king D8, again, you're not really threatening anything. You're allowing the king uh, to come to F7. But there is a move, king E8, that I believe is worth looking at because the king here is absolutely still trapped. It doesn't have anywhere to go. Okay, what have we changed by playing king e8? Well, now this queen sees the f8 square. And so if black plays b6, queen f8 is checkmate, and that is checkmate in two. However, as is seemingly uh, inevitable with this puzzle, h6 uh, comes to the rescue, and after check, there's actually king h7, which pins the queen to the king, um, let alone the fact that you haven't given checkmate. It looks like there's mate in three here, but there's actually not because um, then you'd be in check from the black rook. So, you know, h6 solves this problem. Um, again, there's no way to get onto the g file here to deliver this mate. And even if there was, um, that would be in three moves. Also, instead of h6, the move d6 prevents this. Then we'd have to take this pawn and again, not checkmate in two. So the king move makes no sense. At this point, I've narrowed it down. It has to be the queen move. Uh, starting by ruling out the pieces that have less moves is obviously an easy way to go. So it has to be a queen move. Now, the black king already can't move, which is a great start. All we now need to do is move the queen to a place where we can deliver check the next move. Looking at the black king here, there are three avenues of attack that we could go to deliver check. I mean, given that the black rook is on h8 and the pawn is on h7, we obviously can't deliver check there. Um, the question is, which of these, uh, you know, do we want a2 to g8, that diagonal there? Do we want the back rank or do we want the g file? Well, we can start ruling these out. 
So we've now got three options. The first, which is the easiest to rule out, is getting on this diagonal. It's just not possible to deliver check in two moves unless black horrifically blunders. I mean, queen c4, and after like d6, then this is checkmate, but black really does not have to play d6. They could just play any other move, and it's impossible to now um, deliver mate here because the pawn would simply take. So we can rule out uh, this angle of attack. Now the question is, are we trying to get on the back rank or are we trying to get on the g-file? Let's deal with the back rank first. After queen takes b7, which is a very intuitive move, taking the pawn, get the pawn out of the way, ready to come onto the back rank and deliver checkmate here. Um, if some stupid move like d6, f2, h4, uh, e5, even d5, you know, there's many ways to blunder mate here. However, the only other legal move, h6, saves the day for black. Well, not quite because it will still be a losing position, but after check, king h7 happens and we haven't delivered mate in two moves. Thus, we've failed the puzzle. h6 is a very common problem that we'll see in trying to deliver back rank mate because say we go anywhere on the c file here, anywhere on the a file here to try and access these, to any of these moves, black can simply play h6 and after the king comes to c8 or to a8, um, there's just going to be the move h6. So now let's consider the g-file. I mean, we've ruled out this diagonal, we've ruled out back rank mate. Um, how do we access the g-file? Well, one move seems pretty obvious. Queen e1, just going to g1, ready to deliver checkmate. I mean, th this is checkmate. The king can't move anywhere and um, check is delivered. But after queen e1 here, black can simply play f2. And the access to g1 and also g3 are both cut off. Because if queen g1, the pawn just takes. And all of a sudden, white's position is not looking too great. Because after check, the king comes up and if we promote, they can just take and we actually completely lose the game. This is obviously a massive problem. We can't now deliver mate in two, even though we can go potentially to f1 and then try and come to g2. f2 just prevents this idea of queen e1. We can't go to g2. We can't go to g4. And we can't go to g1, as I've just explained. Now, for a similar reason that we can't go to g1, we also can't go to g3 because this pawn could be pushed. And so you see there's actually a surprising lack of squares we can access. We obviously can't go to g6 either. And if there was a way to access g7, the game would be over by now. The final try really to get onto the g file is queen f4. And this move looks very, very hopeful. I mean, you've got the threat of queen g5 mate and the threat of queen b8 checkmate on the back rank. The problem with this, again, h6. And we can't go here, and if we do go queen b8, then the king can run to h7. So we can't get onto the g file. Well, we're kind of stuck, aren't we? I mean, we've just proven you can't get onto the back rank, you can't get onto the g file, and you also can't get onto this diagonal to deliver check. The pawn push doesn't do anything, and a king move doesn't do anything. What else is there left to do? And that's when I realized this is a Zugzwang puzzle. Zugzwang means that you make a move, and then in your opponent's position, every legal move one of which they must make, worsens their position. And the fact that this is a Zugzwang puzzle is so cool. That brings me to my solution here, which is, drum roll please, queen e4. And you're thinking, what? How is queen e4? I mean, you're not even threatening this. You're not threatening this. I mean, they're both held. You're not threatening to get onto the g-file anyway. You're not even threatening to get onto the back rank. You're not threatening to take on here. You just, I mean, how can this possibly be a win? Well, the point is that the combined nature of all three of these ways to deliver checkmate means that black has to concede one of them. And this is what I mean. So let's first look at h6. I mean, if they play h6 here, now we can go onto g6 and deliver checkmate. The h pawn finally having left its station uh, for a bad reason and conceding mate on g6. So, okay, black can't play h6. What happens if black plays h4? Well, then we go to g4 and deliver checkmate here. Okay, well, black doesn't have to play h4. Why would they play a move that loses in the game? What about f2? But then all of a sudden, this avenue to the g-file opens up here. Queen g2, checkmate, yet again. Okay, but again, you know, black doesn't have to move any of these pawns. Black could move the b-pawn, for instance, to b6 or to b5. Let's just say b5 for the sake of argument. But then the queen drops into a8 and delivers checkmate along the back rank here. And it's like, okay, well, I mean, there's still other moves that you can do. You could play, I don't know, you could play 
E5, that looks fine, doesn't it? Nope, because then this diagonal is weakened. We can get onto this diagonal with the queen and deliver mate on D5. And then you realize that, okay, well, I mean, the only other moves are D6 and D5, both of which leave this pawn unguarded so we can capture it with checkmate. Once the queen is on E4, the queen starts on B4 and steps to E4, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight moves, and all of them hang checkmate in one. Despite in this position, if it was white's turn, they're not even being a functional check. The realization that from your queen on B4, you want to put it on E4, not to go for any of these avenues of attack here, the G file, this diagonal, or the back rank, but you actually want to put it here so you can access all of them because every single move in black's position loses uh, and weakens the position to an extent where one of these avenues will have to be conceded. I think this just goes to show the power of a centralized queen, the fact that it can, from this position, hit not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but six different checkmates um, all in the same time, and that this is actually a Zugzwang, and that black now has to make a move, uh, any of which will lose the game in one move, is just really cool. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed uh, this puzzle. I hope you enjoyed the very detailed breakdown. Uh, if I find other puzzles that I've enjoyed quite as much as this one, then I will most likely make videos on them. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed. I really appreciate feedback in the comments as to whether you think I should make this kind of thing a series, um, as to whether you enjoyed that detailed breakdown. Uh, or maybe I should speed things up and not explain everything in such depth. But I'm very aware I have a lot of um, a lot of viewers that are fairly new to chess or... You know, I don't want to be just whizzing through things, discounting things, assuming people have uh, understood. And actually, I think it's good to just break it right down. If you solved this puzzle, congratulations. Uh, and thank you very much for watching. Enjoy your day.